your parents are upper middle class. No, they're not. Yes, they are, Jordan. They teach at a university. It's public. (laughs) (laughs) Rachel said it just bodies. She body, body, bodied this role. I, I'm so glad that this was, like, kind of the thing that launched her, like, a little more mainstream, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because it was kind of, like, if you didn't know Shiva Baby, or if you weren't, like, chronically online, you didn't know Rachel Sennett. Yeah. Or if you weren't in, like, the New York comedy scene. If you weren't, like, an (laughs) NYU girly. exactly. So I'm glad she's finally gotten the recognition she deserves, especially after Bottoms now. Which I have not seen yet, but you, you said it was great, right? It was really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I think it's coming to streaming, like, fairly soon. Soon. I think yeah, I yeah. may have just missed its like run in the theaters, mm. but which lived. was pretty short. But I think it still did really well for itself. Yeah, considering I saw it like it did really well for for having only been playing in like fucking ten theaters in the whole world. Yeah, like, exactly. It was not playing anywhere. No, which it was is pretty limited. Wild because I, I mean maybe I'm just the target demographic, mm-hmm. but I feel like I got a fair amount of marketing for it. I got a ton. So yeah, I mean, and I guess we yeah. are like target demo, uh-huh. but I'm like it, they really promoted yeah, it. You're actually wearing their, like, entire outfit. Oh, really? Yeah. Unintentionally. This this was the entire wardrobe for the movie. (laughs) But I feel like for as much as they pushed it, I'm like, and now I can't even go see it. Like, I I think the nearest it was playing was, like, an hour away from... Yeah, well, we also don't have any AMCs around us, unfortunately. Oh, was it an AMC specific? Well, I think AMC is just, like, more prone to, like, put that kind of stuff out there or Mm -hmm. whatever. And, like, what what is there in Blackstone? I don't even know what it is. Oh, a cinema. Cinemark, yeah, which is, I don't know. Whatever. I feel like AMC is for the girlies. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? true. So they got the popcorn machine where you can, like, put your own butter D- on yeah, it. Yeah, DIY your butter. I saw I saw something recently about a hack. In the straw? What? No, people put, like, straws for the drinks, especially for the slushies. They're a little bit wider. Uh-huh. And you stick them in your popcorn, and then you fill those up with butter. So then when your <gasps> butter is low, you pull the straw up, and it no. releases... I didn't see that. I saw someone bring, like, um, essentially a small spray bottle to the <laughs> theater, and they filled that up, and then when their popcorn needs more butter. Misting her. Yeah, misting her. Oh Which I am one of those people that I'll go, and, like, they have the little cups with the little lids on it. Oh, yeah. And I'll fill it up mm-hmm. so that I can bring it into the theater. And once I hit the midpoint... Because Re- when you're drizzling the her. butter, like, you're only getting that top layer. Exactly. And, like, you can drizzle as much as you want. You're not getting past, like, halfway. Mm-mm. No. She's dense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but hi, this is The Swamp. It's our <laughs> podcast, and it's an acronym. It stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And we, like, accidentally did the same movie two weeks in a row now because we are doing game month where we're doing movies about games based on games, general game, the gamification mm-hmm. of cinema, if you will. And we covered Clue last week. And then we were like, let's switch it up. Let's do something totally different. Let's totally like go out of left field. Yeah. Like an entirely, it's the same movie. It's, it's exactly just, it's like another movie. like whodunit. Yeah. Moving from room to room as people get eliminated. <laughs> like it's literally the same <laughs> film. Yeah. It's just like about zoomers. Yeah. There's just more drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yassification of Clue. <laughs> I would love to think that that's what this is. It's like if Clue is based on Clue, I feel like Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is based on Among Us. Like, Yeah, or like, I mean, they kind of like hinted at it in the movie, like the game Werewolf. Yes. Or like, which Mafia. I've never played. Mafia, yeah. I, I, like, I know Mafia. I bet it's a regional thing. I think As to like so. what you call it, because yeah. it's always been Mafia. Yeah. To us. In, like, I feel like New England. But. Yeah, but, like, like my partner Maya, they were always like, oh, it's werewolf. Werewolf, yeah. 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 Which, n- it no, does, it's not. Not for me, but whatever. But basically, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is an A24 mm-hmm. horror comedy. I don't even know, like, what genre. Thriller. Really, like, yeah, like, thriller, but also, like, I would say I laugh more than anything during yeah, this Yeah, I'm movie. not nervous. I know bitches are dying. <laughs> I was nervous. I was nervous <laughs> for so again, not to continuously flex. I'm gonna bring this up. I think until the end of time. But oh, I, you went to South by South. I, I saw this. I saw this at the global premiere <laughs> with Rachel Senna. Mm-hmm. She was there. 
<laughs> oh my god. Um, but I remember I really, I really had to pull teeth to get people to come see this with me because they That's were like crazy. They were like, "This looks like stupid." And I'm like, "But it's it's stupid, but it's gonna be funny." And yeah, that's not a bad thing. Like, I love a stupid movie. Yeah. And they all ended up. I think I used Pete Davidson as the selling point, which is like that's m- crazy. Which is not actually the selling point, but I was like, Pete Davidson's gonna be in it, and they were like, "Yeah, okay." And they all ended up really liking it. And it was funny to me that we all had pretty different like opinions afterwards about like who we thought did it or like what the tension was uh-huh. because like I, I mean not to get too much into the plot but like b the b character yeah. i was like on her side from the very beginning well she's the most like normal person but they were all like oh i thought she did it up until the very end like i thought that she there was gonna be a big twist in that like she was like had some sort of ulterior motive and i'm like she was such like the audience stand-in for me yeah the whole time it was just like me feeling like anxious uh-huh. for, like on behalf yeah. of her she's doing weird shit and i'm like that's weird but i would also probably be doing weird shit when she brings the zucchini bread and they all make fun of her i'm like i would die for her yeah i would die for B. I dropped to my knees <sighs> if some little lesbian came up and said oh I made you zucchini, zucchini bread, bread. <laughs> when Pete Davidson said she seems like a school shooter I was like I would murder you I oh, would easily. murder you Pete Davidson I, this is probably one of my favorite things that I've seen him in because he genuinely does take this role on so well because I think he just it's was just this, just this it's just that guy so I look like I fucked that's just the kind of vibe I give off. Yeah, well, that was entirely written in once Pete Davidson. Like, I'm assuming it was written in once Pete Davidson took on the role. Oh, just yeah. Just the whole, like, He DD looks like he fucks. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Pete Davidson is, like, sort of in the same vein as, like, Timothy Chalamet for me, where it's, like, if you rode him too hard, like, his pelvis would just break. <laughs> you know really? I mean? He doesn't seem that, like, paper skin glass bones to me. Uh, uh, maybe, like, I think he's, like, a half step up from Timmy. I guess. But not, like... Like, not very much. Like, in, like Timmy is made of glass like, and paper, but... He, Timmy's made of glass and paper, and, like, you would break him and know it. Pete he, Davidson is, like, you'd break him, but, like, he wouldn't stop, and he'd, like, try to macho through it. Like and then, like, you'd find him bleeding out on the bathroom floor afterwards once he was, like, getting you a towel. I feel like he's made of moon sand. Like, <laughs> like it would just sort of, like, compress him just enough for it to, to cause irreparable damage. It's like really putting your thumb into a piece of bread. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's one of those that i've always sort of towed the line of like i won't go to bat and defend him being hot but i don't understand people who like rag on him being like he's objectively so disgusting looking how does he pull he's girls disgusting he looking. like he's like an average he also sick <laughs> Yeah, well, I think he has Crohn's disease. I think he has Crohn's disease, yeah, yeah. Um, Which I think just makes the bags under your eyes, for the most part. And like which is of, also probably one of the reasons why girls love it. Right? The girls want a guy who's a little bit sickly. <laughs> but I feel like I've always kind of told of, like, I don't... I think he's, like, conventionally attractive enough. And obviously, he's just, like, probably is funny and nice. Like, that's probably why he gets pussy. Like, he probably just, like, texts back, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't take much these days. Have you seen what? all the Twitter combo about Rachel Sennett's boyfriend? Her, her ex boyfriend or her actual boyfriend? Well, both, both. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about her ex boyfriend until I like looked him up very recently. And do I you was know? Like, do you know Come Town? No. You don't know Come Town? No, I don't know what Come Town. <laughs> so like, good for you for not surrounding yourself with the kind of men who like are cum boys, but. <laughs> But Come Town is a podcast. I just don't surround myself with men. That's so. yeah, so true. It's actually like it's it is objectively kind of funny. <laughs> the one man in my circle is the one that like just dates like lesbians. <laughs> like is as much of a lesbian as a man exactly, can be. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Come Town is like a podcast that is pretty much like for the boys mostly. But I would say if you know like Chapo Trap House, it's like in that same kind of vein of like New York comedy guys yeah. who like do a lot of coke. I looked him up. And then like just... I, I was watching his TikTok. Yes. It didn't make me giggle. I think he's a, out of all the cum boys. I would say that Stavros is probably the objectively funniest Okay. Guy, but maybe. like. But he's, but he's not a cute guy. No. He's not cute. I mean, like, good for Rachel Sennett for not being fapid and, like, 
horrible. It makes you know what sense I mean? Me because, though. like, I think it's funny because that's, like, kind of the image she, like, tries to portray a little bit. Yes. Like, just ditzy, like... Bimbo. Bimbo, mm-hmm. yeah. Cunt, like, yeah. Which I love, which is so amazing. But, like, oh, you actually have, like... But so her boyfriend now is, if you saw the movie Love, Simon, he's oh like, he's like the, the guy who like outs Simon. No. And he's like, in the movie, he's like, he's like a grease ball. But okay. Yeah. But so I feel like in, I saw somebody on Twitter put it pretty perfectly that like in the tradition of Natasha Leone, uh-huh. only play like chaotic queer women yeah. on screen and then have like a weird little boyfriend. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that, that checks, checks out. Yeah. Yeah. That checks out. That checks to me. Uh-huh. Uh, but bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah. I have seen it twice now. Yes, once same here. At, South South South, at the world premiere. <laughs> um, and then I watched it for this podcast on an airplane. Which so was not the vibe. I didn't even think twice about it. I was like, oh, I'll just download it. I'll watch it on the plane. Uh-huh. I turn this on and it's like full on tongue, tongue making out, yeah. close up spit. Oh, yeah. Exchanges Which, for like the first five minutes. And I'm like, I'm like turning the, down the brightness on my computer. being like, <laughs> fuck. I'm like, everyone around thinks I'm starting a porn. <laughs> Great. To me and for me, though, that is a reference to Jennifer's body. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if... I, I can't say for sure, but, like, in my head, I was like, that's exactly what this is. I think it is because uh, Rachel Sennett, in an interview, specifically said that she found a lot of inspiration for this, like, movie and her character from Jennifer's body, and she was like, if you do a double feature, you follow it up, which I'm like, thank you for really? giving me. Really? Oh, like, perfect. Thanks for, uh, thanks thanks for, for doing being, my job. Thanks for being on the pod, Rachel. <laughs> I also love, in the article that I was reading, it, I think it was, like, from whatever article publication, like, is associated with Letterboxd, mm-hmm. but every time they mentioned Rachel Sennett's name, they would, you know, they would say, like, Pete Davidson, parentheses, like, some stuff he's been mm-hmm. in, they would just say Rachel Sennett, parentheses, Letterboxd user, and with, like, underlined, like, linking to her Letterboxd. I love it. But it was just, like, these I other- love that hers is public. Do you follow her? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brilliant. she doesn't do stars. She just does, she, like, yeah. hearts and Yeah, stuff. well, she'll, like, write a little review, which I like, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, tell me why you like it. But I love it. was like, Pete Davidson, you know, SNL, whatever. Mm-hmm. Rachel Sennett, Letterboxd, Letterboxd user. user. <laughs> Put some respect on her name. But she was said she, that she, yeah. She, Rachel Sennett, it's LA skin. It's, a, it's LA. It's LA. If you don't have an eating disorder, get, get one, one, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, like, any of the other cast, though, really. Besides Amandala, who... Yep. Little she, baby Rue. Uh, she also produced, like, co-produced this movie. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Which I'm like, bold of you to, like, take on the most unlikable character in this yeah. film. Yeah. Which I, I think you she... You thought she was most unlikable? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do. <laughs> mm. I mean, like, for... She has her... Her, her reasoning yeah. and her history, mm-hmm. which you can kind of, like, forgive her for some of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm, like, you know, I would die for B. And yeah, the way that yeah. she just continuously does not stick up never for her, mm-hmm. like, pissed me off. Yeah. Especially this watch around. Yeah, on the yeah. plane. As they're, like... As they're, like, shoving her out the door. Like. Right? <laughs> that was the part where I'm, like, I hope you're next, bitch. Yeah, like, really. But I feel like from the other cast... I didn't know a ton of the other girls other than Rachel Sennett and Amandla. Yeah. Um, but so B, B is an actually an Oscar nominated actress. Oh my uh, God. Maria Bak- Bakalova. She is from uh, Bulgaria. Okay. And she very iconically plays Borat's daughter in Borat's subsequent movie. Shut film, up. In which she is Oscar nominated because they <laughs> had her dress up like a reporter and go into a hotel room with Rudy Giuliani. <gasps> that was her. And they put cameras in there and he like tried to pull some shit and they had to like basically like SWAT team in and he like scurried away, but it was like fucking for real. Like they That's crazy. It's I, I don't know if it's problematic of me, but I like kind of unapologetically do like the Borat movies. I've never seen them. <laughs> maybe you follow this up with Borat. Uh, maybe, uh, honestly, Borat subsequent movie film. <laughs> it was a lot of it was like about the pandemic and about like yeah. the the like you know increasing political divide in America, mm-hmm. which kind of was getting tired at that time. Yeah. But to watch it for the scene 
where she she did that for like it was for real that's not staged like they yeah, that happened they got him like they to catch a predator to him yeah it was wild that's insane but so dude. yeah she got nominated oh for best supporting actress for for putting herself out like that that's wild. yeah that's like she should be like getting a journalistic award yeah. <laughs> the purple heart yeah. the presidential medal of honor <laughs> And the, salute to her but then like chaotic casting mm-hmm. then just like pete davidson which just he does fit he just fits. hits perfectly and yeah. then do you know lee, lee pace? pace yeah i i don't know that i've ever seen him in anything else but i think i know him best from being slutty at the met gala uh-huh with the tiny little shorts yep. yeah well he's also he's six five yeah he's enormous mm-hmm. and it's wild because i guess pete davidson must be pretty tall then mm-hmm. because when they go like toe to toe like he obviously still like kind of towers over him mm-hmm. but not to the point where like you would imagine a six five like if a yeah. six five man stood next to uh-huh. anyone under six feet they're gonna look yeah. like enormous yeah. you know it's wild to uh-huh. me uh, but he's in the the hobbit movies the lord of the rings really prequels. yeah he plays like the elf king like very like ethereal which kind of checks Makes out sense. yeah he and is pretty he also was a big uh tumbler guy like he was the the, the infatuation of a lot of tumblr girlies back in the day because he was the lead in this show called pushing daisies which only ran for like two or three seasons or something and it was mm-hmm. one of those ones that people were like like in a rage that it got canceled huh. but it was like about a guy who could like if he touched something that was dead it came back alive huh. but if he touched something alive it died so it was like about a romance between him and somebody that he could like never touch them or else they would die but he could like bring things back to life like dead animals Wild. and stuff it was yeah i never watched it but the, the that's, tumblr that's girlies, very tumblr the tumblr girlies yeah. loved it mm-hmm. there was definitely a lot of like uh-huh. lee pace thirsting oh yeah that doesn't shock me in the slightest going on but i also like that this cast was pretty limited because i feel like we got to know like i, I find myself not remembering characters names a yeah lot. this is like one this, of the only ones like five minutes yeah. in i'm like i've got it sophie jordan emma like yeah. i feel like i know uh-huh. them and their names yeah and mm-hmm. stuff pretty easily. Um, and I also thought that a lot of the actresses who I didn't know really did hold their own because I think a lot of people mm-hmm. would say that, like, Rachel Summit is an absolute scene stealer, that yeah. she just, like, fucking dog walks everyone in every scene she's mm-hmm. in, which I would say is true at some points, but I thought the actress who played Jordan... Yep. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Even, really like, good. I think Emma was a pretty subtle character. Yeah, but, like, you... And, like, she really embodied that. Like, you know that girl. Yes. You know what I mean? They all... I, I, th- I think that's one of the good things about this movie is that, like, all of these characters seem like real characters. Probably more so if you went to, like, a liberal arts college. I was just about to say, I think we are just not quite in the tax bracket no. of knowing, knowing these girls. But I know people who know these girls. Like, yeah, I, exactly. I, like, I follow them on Instagram. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. like, that's the extent to which Like, I they went them. to, like, BU. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or, like, and everyone says that this is, like, um, Among Us if it was an NYU friend group. Like, Literally. Like, that, yeah, <laughs> that checks. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. But um, do we want to give, like, a quick recap of the movie? Yeah. Like, you said it's essentially clue mm-hmm. where more people keep dying throughout the movie mm-hmm. um it was basically sophie played by amanda sandberg is uh she is like a recently recovering drug addict mm-hmm. who lesbian has this new girlfriend and mm-hmm. he's kind of like really rushing into things and like yeah. saying you know that she loves her and it's only been like three weeks and yeah B, that phew, we'll get into that b the the girlfriend is uh presumably just from somewhere in eastern europe they ask her if she's from russia at one point to which she just says no they don't really specify where yeah. she's from but she like mentions you know moving to america with her mom mm-hmm. so she's obviously presumed to be mm-hmm. you know from europe somewhere um but she is Sophie's girlfriend and she is like the plus one to this hurricane party, mm-hmm. yeah. which is all of Sophie's yeah. like high school friends, basically. I think college friends. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Or oh. like, you know, she says that Pete Davidson, Dave, is her like best friend from like yeah. life. Yeah. So like, yeah, just sh- they say like shared history or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, but like she kind of like almost like brings herself to the party without like an invite Mm -hmm. it's like you know when a friend group still uses a group chat but you're not really in the friend group anymore yeah that's like kind of the set setup that they gave us yes that she like saw that this was happening did not respond and then just chose to show up with a plus one so Mm -hmm. everyone presumably is just like hmm okay like weird choice but sure Mm -hmm. like we're all just gonna like you know be fake and pretend like this is okay Uh so they're having this hurricane party where they're basically all just gonna like get trashed in a mansion while a hurricane is happening which sure (laughs) 
I've done that. Not in a mansion, but yeah. like, you know, when like, like a storm. A, yeah, big yeah. storm. Yeah. Same thing as like when you get a snow day. Yep. And oh. You're like, oh, I guess I have to drink whiskey now. Yeah, <laughs> at 10 in the morning. Yeah, exactly. I have to. Oh, no. no. I am obliged. <laughs> <laughs> the Baileys is already in my coffee. Damn it. <laughs> but the other like cast of characters is basically it's Dave's house, and that's yeah. Pete Davidson. And he is just himself. He's just yeah. being sort of like a, a goof. And his mm-hmm. girlfriend is Emma, mm-hmm. who's sort of like more timid and shy mm-hmm. and a little mm-hmm. more reserved. And then there's Alice, who's Rachel Sennett, who's yeah. definitely just her. The, the elite most bimbofication yeah. of Rachel Sennett is yeah. portrayed as Alice. Uh-huh. And her plus one, who is Greg, yeah, who's Lee Pace, Pace, who nobody really knows anything yeah. about. But he's, he's just an older man. He's he's, like, yeah, he's like 40. Yeah. But he's like so hot. Yeah. So it's fine. And then there is Jordan, who... It's She's just, just in the in the group. In the group. Um, and am I missing anyone? No. And then they had a friend who left. Yeah, Max. Who I uh, uh, the first watch around, I thought it was implied that Max was dating Jordan. That like Max and Jordan hmm. were together. But this time around, I didn't no, really get that as no. much. But Max left because they all did shrooms and he was Ma- like, I love Emma. Yes. And then they and then he punches Pete Davidson. And he storms out. And mm-hmm. he had the only car. Is mm-hmm. the big off-screen thing yeah. context that we get. So they're mm. all there with no car except for uh, Sophie's car, which yeah. B leaves the little light on so the battery dies, yeah. which we get that, like, the first scene when she flips that up and forgets to do it. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, oh, no, this is going to come back. The camera her. is lingering for a little bit too yeah, long exactly. on this one detail. <laughs> Um, but basically, they decide as the storm is a brewing that they want to play this game, which is basically mafia or werewolf or whatever. But they call it bodies, 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 where you just sort of turn off the lights, and whoever is <laughs> the like killer, you draw an X out of a, mm-hmm. a hat, and you yeah. have to like tap someone on the back. They lie down, everyone turns the lights on, and then it's very like accusatory of like who's acting sus, mm-hmm. basically. But the twist in the movie is that people are actually dying. dying yeah. And it starts with Pete Davidson. Yeah. He Gets drops like, dead. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, this is so fucked. And they mm-hmm. don't really start pointing fingers until after... They start kind of pointing fingers towards Greg a little bit. Yeah. Because they're like, he seems fucked. Yeah. Then they go... They're like, he wasn't here when it happened. Like, where is he? Like, X, Y, and Z. And all the while, they're doing, like, more drugs and drinking while this is all going on. <laughs> so it's just getting worse. And they basically go to confront him, which is... <laughs> like four small women and yeah. like six, One giant six five man. Lee Pace. and he doesn't really get that they're like being for real like yeah. he thinks like oh you guys are just like fucking, fucking with, with me. me yeah because obviously they're just like all they're, fucked yeah. up they're all saying dave's dad and so and he was like oh you're still playing the game they all have like, like knives though and so he kind of like gets one and starts like getting kind of edgy about it and b they're in like the home gym or whatever yeah. and b just takes a dumbbell and thwops him on the back of the head <laughs> and just kills the shit out of him. his shit yeah she bombs him on the head and he passes out and then he sits back up for a second and she double taps the <laughs> shit out of him is wild yeah. but in her defense it does seem like self-defense because he yeah. was like he's a large man getting aggressive yeah and she was like i just wanted to protect you guys but they then kind of use that against yeah. her they're, they're like, like you, you literally killed, killed him. him in front of us yeah um but so then they sort of go throughout the house again continuing to do drugs uh-huh. and also like unpacking a lot of like personal baggage yes. along the way of being like well like you're a bitch and a liar Mm -hmm. and whatever Mm -hmm. and so then what is it emma emma takes some drugs and falls down the stairs yep and everyone thinks someone killed her yep and then and then jordan gets a gun (laughs) jordan gets a gun gun and they push b out of the house Uh because they're like you are not our friends we don't know you and sophie just lets it happen Uh uh-huh yeah sophie relapses (laughs) sophie relapses and then betrays her girlfriend Uh um, on multiple occasions yeah and then the the uh, entering the third act, I think, is just like the best part of the whole yes. film. The entire this dialogue. This is also where Rachel shines. So this is the whole dialogue exchange between Alice and Jordan, where it's like about her podcast <laughs> and about having a podcast is really hard. You have to make a Google Calendar. <laughs> you have to get guests. <laughs> Why didn't we open up with that one? Oh, oh my, my god. god. It's like, what's your podcast about? Talking with your smartest and funniest friend. <laughs> <laughs> when she, when Sophie gets to the party originally, not to backtrack, but uh-huh. she's like, oh, like, Alice, I it's love so good to see you. I love you. And she goes, oh, we've got a fan of the pod. <laughs> and I felt so 
so personally <laughs> attacked. I felt so personally attacked by <laughs> Alice's character in this movie. No, that's actually just Rachel said it too. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, oh, I so hate good. that I'm her. Like I felt <laughs> seen by that. A podcast is a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, Dara edits and makes all the TikToks and everything like that, and I just show up with coffee when we record. (laughs) Um, um, But so then Jordan just, like, accidentally, like, this movie is really, like, a a good thing to show people about, like, gun safety. (laughs) Because they're all just, like, throwing this gun around, and basically she sort of ends up, like, semi-accidentally shooting Alice just in the stomach. (laughs) Well, my favorite part is first she shoots her in the leg. In the leg, oh. (laughs) First she shoots her in the leg and she's like, (laughs) there's there's like, like probably three minutes of Rachel Sennett just riffing. like You shot me! (laughs) And Jordan's like, no, I didn't. She just keeps being like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Which is like, so like what someone would do in like a situation like this. No, I didn't! (laughs) Rachel Sennett being there like, oh God, it hurts. <laughs> but they basically all then grapple to fight for this gun. Yeah, and Alice gets Alice killed. Straight up gets shot in the stomach. I mean, now everyone is really on edge. Mm-hmm. B gets back in the house yeah. and basically is sort of like traversing around with Jordan, who keeps telling B that like that she and Sophie had had sex like yeah, the, the yeah, day that, prior. Yeah, this kind of yeah, and is like check her texts. Like she's uh-huh. not loyal. Like whatever. And B is just kind of like oh like. I guess thanks for letting me know, but also, like, you have a gun and are yeah. pointing it at me, yeah. so I'm not into that. So she so pushes s- her over the side of the yeah, balcony. Yeah, well, Sophie and, like, Jordan have, like, this big standoff, kind of almost, yep. where Jordan's like, please stop coming towards me, <laughs> and Sophie just won't. I know, so if somebody's pointing a gun at you and telling you not to walk closer to them, maybe don't do that. Yeah, hot take. But then B pushes Jordan over the side of the balcony. Uh-huh. Jordan dies. Jordan yeah. dies, leaving us only with... Sophie and B, and uh-huh. they basically are still like B is now sus about Sophie. Yeah, and she's like, "Don't touch me, don't come near me." But uh-huh. is also like trying to like not yeah. get on her bad side in uh-huh. case something is. But they, yeah, she basically is like, "Show me your phone." Uh-huh. She gets the gun and is like, "Show me your phone." Sophie won't do it. They uh-huh. sort of grapple around uh-huh. in the mud yeah. near Dave's dead body. <laughs> And then they find Dave's phone. The sun comes up. They find Dave's phone. And it turns out the big plot twist at the end is that Pete Davidson katana himself <laughs> in the neck while trying to do it like a TikTok. Trying to saber a champagne Because earlier in the movie, uh, Greg had like really coolly taken a big uh, sword, sword shit and, and like sabered, popped yeah. the top of a champagne uh-huh. thing off. And so he was like trying to do it on a TikTok and he just knifes himself in the neck and fucking dies yeah so it turns out like there there was was no no killer killer. it was just everyone being really paranoid Mm -hmm. which i didn't see coming really so much really i remember in the theater being like pretty shook being like that that was a really fun ending that i didn't Mm -hmm. see coming Mm -hmm. just and it's so silly that it's Mm -hmm. not like a big dramatic reveal it's like no 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 he katana'd himself in the neck while doing a tiktok (laughs) which is just like Mm -hmm. encapsulates the whole vibe of this whole movie oh absolutely i think it was a good ending for what this movie is Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other the guy who left max comes back basically to find everyone dead and mm -hmm. sophie and b just like fuck covered in mud (laughs) yeah (laughs) which presumably prison for life yeah you would assume yeah, I think the the writing in this movie to me is the thing that stands out the it's most. It's the dialogue, yeah, uh-huh. and the the premise. But yeah, no, the dialogue. Which also, who wrote this? Do you know? I, you're you're always the person that does. Um, I don't know. I don't. I know that the person who directed it is gay. Nice. <laughs> so okay. A, perfect. A queer woman directed it, but I don't know much about who yeah. wrote it. I know it's like it's based off of like a short story or something or like uh-huh. a book i don't really but i don't really know too much oh yeah it is hmm. which is pretty cool to me that it seems like a, a fair amount of like unknown filmmakers mm-hmm. like not super popular came together to make this because like i think the the vision is so clear and the writing is so like funny and pointed mm-hmm. and poignant and 
I don't know. This to me feels like something that would have had a way higher budget. Yeah. But they were just really creative with their filmmaking. One location. Yeah. Six Love actors. It. Love it. Like, you know, but like we're budgeting in a way, mm-hmm. but we can still make a really good and fun mm-hmm. movie without mm-hmm. spending a good trillion dollars, mm-hmm. which I think is always a good example of like you don't need a Marvel budget to yeah. make like something that's fun and entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like this movie. I, as much as I would say it's not, like, my favorite, I, I think before this we were discussing, I think it's, like, the prime example of, like, a three-star yeah. movie, which, to me, like, three's good. Yeah. Three stars is good. It's and, above halfway. And even, like, to me, like, out of the five is not, like, you can't equate that to being, like, out of ten slash out of a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like, a three out of five isn't a six out of ten isn't a 60%. Yeah. To me, they're entirely different it, like, yeah, ranking we're not, systems. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know exactly what you mean. We're not giving this a grade. But like, sometimes I think three or like three and a half. Oh, chef's kiss. A three and a half star movie yeah. can be so good. A three and a half star movie can be better than a five star movie Absolutely. sometimes. Like, Absolutely. If that makes sense. No, I totally know what you mean. And it also, it's also like, it's it's all vibes. All vibes. At the end vibes. of the day. Like, yeah, sure, The Godfather is a five-star movie. No, it's not. Sure, whatever you say, but um, am I going to enjoy watching that more than I'm going to wa- enjoy watching this? No! Rachel Sennett could have done The Godfather, but could Marlon Brando have played Alice? I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to see Rachel Sennett and Sofia Coppola um, oh. matched up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do we know what her, do we know any upcoming Rachel Sennett projects? Because I know Bottoms was like the big one that we were not like that hyping I know up for a while. Of, no. I would love, I just want to know her and oh. Ayo Adabiri, I want them to be in everything uh-huh. together forever. I, well, I guess they were friends at NYU kind of thing, which I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. and Emma Seligman, who. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. And I, Emma Seligman. And I, I love that Molly Gordon is also in their kind of little like group. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm obsessed. I just want them to, yeah, yeah, make stuff together for the rest of Yeah, one of the SAG AFTRA, like, um, what is it? The st- oh, Oh my god, the memes that are popping <laughs> yeah. off right now are that That's the, what I want, like, for one of the uh, auctions is... Dream blunt rotation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go to a boozy brunch with these four. Like, oh my god, bottomless mimosas. With the cast of bottoms. <laughs> and then Molly Gordon is just there. <laughs> that would actually be so ideal. This movie, like, makes me feel the same way that those TikToks of people who push the glass bottles down flights of stairs <laughs> do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, there's anticipation, there's intrigue, but ultimately <laughs> it's just, like, flashy and fun and makes yeah. me, like, kind of like, ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just make, it, it just gets the serotonin sensors in yeah. my head firing. It satiates my... Mm-hmm. <laughs> my synapses are firing. <laughs> During this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I appreciate the, the, like, I love now that movies are finally being like, oh, these people can just be gay without it being the center point of yes. the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, look at these lesbians. Like, brilliant. Like, it doesn't really come into play besides, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, they're just dating. It's not a big deal other than the fact that they capitalize off of, like, every lesbian stereotype, like, ever. Of yeah. They're like, um, yeah, Sophie is like, B, I'm in love with you. You don't have to say it back, but I know we've only known each other for three weeks. Yeah, it was, yeah, and that was one of the things <laughs> in this movie that I was like, okay, they got this right. The six weeks after you start dating, yeah. saying, I love you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But also, I, their relationship, like, was such a focal point of, like, frustration. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, the most, like, unspoken tension mm-hmm. that I felt the whole movie. Because yeah. everyone else is, like, airing their dirty laundry. Uh-huh. But the thing that I'm really focusing on is, like, the way that everyone is, like, shitting on B and Sophie's not standing up for her. Yeah. Like, what a what a red flag. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Which, come to find out, Sophie had fucked Jordan, like, the day before or mm-hmm. something like that. Which... I- is it wrong that I'm like, Jordan is the most sensible person in this whole film. I agree with like almost everything Jordan does. Other than maybe really? like get, other than like- Pulling sh- the gun? Other than maybe like sh- literally shooting Alice. <laughs> the way that like her level of paranoia is 
makes sense to me. Mm. I I agree with you. I think she is the most sensible. I think she's just like the way that she communicates is really bad. Yeah. Which makes her obviously come off as a dick mm-hmm. and everything like that. Like her saying, I'm saying, staying safe as she grabs a knife while they go to find Lee Pace. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 That makes Reasonable. sense. And everyone else is sort of like, pointing fingers for sort of nonsensical reasons but i feel like her pointing finger always like has some Mm -hmm. ground to stand on like she always has some sort of like argument like Uh yeah like you know i am currently suspecting it's this person for xyz reason Mm -hmm. not just like you're being a cunt to me right now yeah Uh it was probably you yeah as much as i would like to think that i could stay level-headed to some degree in this situation i think i would end up being um emma who falls down the stairs <laughs> gets too well, fucked up out of too, stress yeah too fucked up out of stress goes to lie down just like, t- t- takes more drugs and then dies falling down the stairs which her death is like maybe the most gruesome because it's like all the way down the stairs are like gash marks of like she does look like she got got she fell <laughs> She got, you know that documentary, The Staircase, about- Yeah, about that guy who, like- Pushed his wife down the uh stairs, but they were like, it was an owl. She got attacked by a bird of prey, (laughs) because that's what her body looked like at the bottom of the staircase. (laughs) Like, wild. Emma, it was was an owl. It was an owl. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. Um, but do we want to get into our regularly scheduled program? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so I feel, who do we pick for Fuck, Mary Kill? Do we want to just... We could do the whole cast, or we could do, here, <sighs> from the known queer women. Okay. B, Jordan, Sophie. Mm-hmm. I'm... Fuck, Mary Kill. I'm killing <laughs> Sophie, right? I'm, yeah, I'm gonna kill Sophie... I think I'm gonna marry Jordan. Really? Yeah. And I'm gonna fuck B. Mm. I think that I'm too sensitive for Jordan. Mm -hmm. I will not take criticism or suggestion very well. (laughs) Um, And I think that we, our communication styles will not match up. Um, So for that reason, I'll fuck her. Mm Because she will tell me exactly what she wants. Yes. Um, And then I'm gonna marry B. Yep. Um... And I'm going to be there and support her through um, her dealing with her mother's, um, what was it? Um, Oh, she had uh, borderline borderline. personality disorder. (laughs) Which, oh my god, when they do that reveal, it's basically, they're like, the whole reason why B is like being kind of awkward or sus or whatever is because she has been lying to Sophie yeah. about like her situation that uh-huh. she didn't actually go to college and she doesn't actually have a job that she's been taking care of her mom who's mentally ill uh-huh. and at one point oh my god who's <laughs> like I think Jordan calls somebody a psychopath uh-huh. and then I think it's Alice uh, is like that's really ableist. that's really ableist <laughs> you can't say that that's so ableist yeah. and then she says I'm an ally <laughs> No, that whole 20 minute sequence with uh, um, Rachel Senna is brilliant. Chef's kiss. Um, yeah, but so I'm gonna I'm gonna marry B and I'm gonna kill Sophie mm-hmm. easily. And then out of the cast, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna marry Alice. <laughs> I'm gonna marry Alice. I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck Greg and oh. I'm gonna kill. <sighs> Mm-hmm. I'll kill Pete Davidson. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I his character, I couldn't imagine like standing alone in a room with him. Mm-mm. Like he would just say something like mildly offensive to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so I'm gonna kill. Yeah, I'm also gonna kill Dave. I'm gonna. Yeah, I guess I'll marry Alice. <laughs> she can come be on the pod. Like, oh my god. Um. <laughs> And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck, oh, fuck Emma. Yeah, yeah. sure. Did you see her in Had a Gabbler? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Not to be mean, guys, but like she wasn't that good in Had a Gabbler. She wasn't that good. <laughs> Yeah, she's been, like, fucking Pete Davidson for, like, three yeah. years, so I feel like she needs, like, mm-hmm. she needs the the tender embrace of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, 
So you're watching this with all of your bitches. Mm-hmm. After this, you're going to play werewolf or mafia or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but after that, mm-hmm. what are you going to... Well, actually, what are you going to eat? Okay. This? Sorry. I'm getting out of order. So my my answers are pretty, um, like, standard, boring. I just think because of the whole champagne scene, mm-hmm. you do a champagne... Just champagne straight or a, a champagne cocktail with little fruit, and you use those little cocktail swords. So it's like mm. sword and champagne for, like, mm-hmm. for like yeah, Davidson. Yeah, that's cute. I don't know. <laughs> Can you not, bro? <laughs> bro, you just said hello. <laughs> and, and then I don't know why this, like, specifically is speaking to me, but I think maybe it's, like, the glow sticks. Mm. The glow stick imagery is really just sending me to a, a mind space where I'm thinking about the trolley sour gummy worms Ooh. in the the berry flavor. Okay. So the sour gummy worms that are if they're only like red and blue. Yeah, and purple, I know which what is you're the best about. flavor. Yeah. I want that. Okay. That's okay. what I want. I can get behind you mm-hmm. with that. Um so, I think that you don't really make a cocktail for this. I think you're drinking tequila. Just straight. I think you're taking tequila shots. And you're slapping your friends. Yeah, exactly. I think you're taking a couple of tequila shots. Maybe, like, you can make a little drinking game with it, but you're not using lime and salt. You're using lemon and sugar. Is that worse? No, it's good. Oh. I like it. But I just think it's more girly pop, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> In my mind, that's what that's what I equate it to. Um, and then um, I think you, um, everyone gets sort of like their gas station like food order almost. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the hot Cheetos scene in the car where B just downs them. Yep. Really did it for me. So like obviously I would hope someone brings like hot Cheetos, mm-hmm. but like you all like maximize your um your kind of gas station. Yeah, you want order. your your sweet snack, your salty snack, and your chocolate snack. Yeah. Like you need one of these. Exactly. Yeah, you need it like a, a mm-hmm. sour candy, yeah. a chocolate candy, yeah. and then, and then, then you can chip. bring like your sweet tea for your chaser or whatever, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, whatever your thing is. But yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I do. So then, I, I think you I think you maximize that and you share it with everyone. And then what do you follow it up with? I mean, I'm going for like the softball here. Like I think you jump from this movie to the objectively better movie Bottoms, which is also sort of just like funny and like a stupid movie, mm-hmm. which it is perfect because it doesn't try to be anything else. I think it's great. I'm really excited to watch it. It's, I'll have to, yeah. As soon as it's on, very good on a streaming platform mm-hmm. that hopefully I have. I've been I've been getting booted off all my parents' streaming platforms. Dang. I've been pissed about it. What's worse, getting booted off your parents' insurance or oh, getting all booted off the street? God, platform. don't even get me started. <laughs> Um, I also had two pretty basic answers other than Rachel Sennett saying you should follow it up with Jennifer's body. Of course. I think another good A24, like fun, campy slasher movie Mm -hmm. is X. Um, Oh yeah. I really like that one a lot and it is very much like everyone systematically getting killed. And you also see Kid Cudi's like massive fake dong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it also is kind of like girly pop cunty, kind of fun, but like also. It is very much more like slasher. We're taking some of the humor away and we're getting really more slashery. Yeah. But then I. Bitches are getting gutted. And then similar to your answer, I think something that just came out that I was lucky enough to happen to catch in the theaters, but I think it's on Hulu, like, as of, like, today or something, is um the movie Theater Camp. Oh, yeah. S- starring Molly Gordon is in it. So yeah. I think you stay within the, the Shiva Baby cinematic universe, uh-huh. and you watch this Molly Gordon movie, which if you've ever been, like, a band person or a theater person or just been, like, around theater it, people... It rings true. Oh, right? it hits so hard. It's so funny. Like, you... <laughs> in the same way that, like, the NYU girlies know the Bodies, Bodies, Bodies character, uh-huh. if you've ever been in a theater department like you know these people in this movie and it's it was incredibly funny and it was such a pleasant surprise because i didn't really think 
much of it, but a friend who really loves Amy Sedaris was like, can we go see this Amy Sedaris movie? And I was I like, I'm like, you mean the Ben Platt theater camp movie? This is going to be so cringe. And I went and I have not like belly laughed like that in public really? in a long time. So I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, so, so I'll I have to watch it. Would definitely recommend. I, I think it's on Hulu right now. Beautiful. Um, Would recommend. And then what are you going to give Bodies, Bodies, Bodies out of 10? A six. I'll give it a six. Yeah. yeah. Me saying like a three star is not the same as a six out but of for 10. me today it's a six it's but like <laughs> six and a half <laughs> but yeah i'll yeah. give it i'll give it a six in the way that i think it fully earns it's all all of its six points yeah i don't think i'm gonna like revisit this one a lot but when i am watching it i'm having a very fun time mm-hmm. yeah. on a plane exactly. on a delta on a six hour delta flight oh. the, the reason why this podcast is a little late this week um because i went to forks washington to see bella's house <laughs> um i just had to and that's why the, the fake re- the the renesme doll yes yeah, so hopefully some day soon i'm gonna be putting up on our patreon a little video documenting my little experience going to the twilight museum and forks and seeing all the fun little things from the movie that they have Brilliant. uh there so if you are a patreon member uh Take, watch out for that. Yeah, watch out for that sometime soon. We'll also be hopefully putting up some more bonus episodes this month. Um, the link to that is in the description below. It's $2.86 to support the podcast with your smartest and funniest <laughs> friends. friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, there are links to all our other stuff. You know what to do. Send us your suggestions, your movie suggestions for this month, but mm. all months. Month themes, chocolate or vanilla mm. themes, all of that good stuff. We love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And goodbye. And good night.